the retrograde approach uh, it's a very complex scenario in which uh, uh, operator can use and can uh, and should know several different techniques and uh, uh, also there are several different devices that could be useful but uh, uh, um, for a question of time it was not possible for us uh, to uh, uh, show in just one session all the techniques and all the device that you can use in during retrograde approach so we decided to arrange this uh, uh, session of this evening uh, in a sort of a tip and tricks uh, uh, webinar so we identify five five different uh, uh, scenarios in which uh, we can uh, uh, discuss and we can see uh, uh, several interesting cases performed by roberto and alessio uh, in which some tips and tricks could be useful to understand how to use the device in the best way. So, uh, please, Roberto, you can uh, go on with the uh, with the first. No, no, Roberto, uh, Alessio, with the, the first case. Okay, thank you, Gabriele. Good evening, everybody. So, uh, the first uh, part of the presentation, uh, we, we will talk about the use of dual lumen microcatheters in uh, retrograde approach because we know that nowadays these microcatheters are uh, uh, widely used in retrograde procedure and can make our uh, CTO PCI more efficient. So the first case is, uh, is about a patient who 58 years old who underwent the triple bypass uh, surgery in uh, 2019 but unfortunately this was a very unlucky patient because in just a few months later he suffered of no STEMI because of the occlusion of two bypass, the venous on the obtus marginal and the uh, lima for the LAD. So we, of course, underwent coronary angiography and the uh, CTO, PCI or LAD was planned. So the, uh, we use uh, uh, an hybrid approach with the left, femor left femoral axis and the left radial axis. This is the baseline coronary angiography, uh, focused on the uh, LAD CTO. So uh, the graft on the RCA was uh, fortunately open, so there were, it was plenty of collateral, septal collaterals to the LAD. And this is the double injection showing uh, the LAD occlusion that was already present at the time of the surgery. So according to the AVID approach, we chose in this case uh, a retrograde approach because it was a very long lesion, a blunt stamp, proximal stamp, and as you know, the retrograde approach means to use a, sequen a sequence of uh, different steps in order to uh, uh, open the vessel. So very quickly, this, uh, sometimes you need to prepare the donor vessel because in this case was, there was a stenosis, so it was uh, treated before uh, starting the CTO-PCI. And uh, according to the anatomy, of course, we started with the uh, 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 I like to, uh, when it's possible to uh, do a selective angiography of the septals in order to, uh, to uh, track the, the septal uh, root. So after doing this, uh, this deep injection, with the SUL03 was quite, in this case, to cross the septal. Because it was large enough to advance easily the wire. So at this point, I started with the retrograde uh, wire escalation technique. So I started with a Gaia second, trying to uh, penetrate the, the plaque. Then uh, it stopped at a uh, 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 determinate point. So I switched to the uh, Gaia third. So in this case, it's a nice example of how to you or do a retrograde wire crossing with Ivo's guide re-entry. This was a typical situation where we have available a, a septal to uh, advance the wire, and over this wire we advance the IOPS. So you can see how the retrograde wire is advancing to the plaque, and we control the advancement of the retrograde wire with IVUS image. So the, the uh, wire is now in the proximal vessel, and you will see here on the right the wire coming. So this is very important use of IVUS because, uh, of course, you can be sure this way that the wire is in the proximal true lumen, avoiding uh, to extend the dissection the, into the proximal segment of the occluded vessel. 
So at this point, it's very important, of course, to uh, perform a wiring of the distal uh, um, vessel. So that, uh, and this nowadays is performed using a dual lumen microcatheter. And uh, in this case, I used an answer uh, RX that we have already seen in the previous webinars. That is uh, the only six French trappable dual lumen microcatheter that is available uh, at the moment. And uh, thanks to uh, the presence of a stylet that is removable, is a very good uh, pushability, so it can be advanced even in uh, complex lesions. So in this case, advanced without predilating the, the lesion, so just after advancing the microcut, the, uh, the Corsair, uh, for the externalization, I advanced the uh, Enhanced RX, and at this point, you can advance on the, the second wire, on the over the wire lumen, to gain the, uh, the distality of the occluded vessel. And this is the main use in the case of the dual lumen microcatheter. And this was the final result after pre adaptation and the stenting. So, uh, dual lumen microcatheter for retrograde approach uh, are very important. And this is a typical use that everybody should know when approaching these lesions. So, this is the end of this case. So, if there is any comment uh, from you guys. <clears throat> yes. So I, I think that it's a very uh, important uh, message because uh, in this case, uh, uh, the use of the dual lumen microcatheter, uh, uh, it's mandatory because you can cross anti-gradely uh, the lesion, the, the segment in which there was the CTO that you has already opened uh, without uh, uh, any risk to, to, to have uh, uh, subintimal tracking anti-gradely. So in this case, you can gain the distal through lumen of the LAD. And it's a, a very important aspect when the, the, the connection of the collateral channel is very close to the CTO or it's inside or at the level of a disease segment. So if you have to stand integrally over the RG3 wire, you cannot uh, uh, use the RG3 wire to stent the LAD because you have the risk to, to put the stent inside the ostium of the septum. So in this case, uh, you, you have to reach the distal LAD and the best way, the most elegant way and the most safe uh, uh, way is to use the dual lumen microcatheter as you show in your uh, excellent case. So I think that we can go on with the next uh, case uh, performed by Roberto. Yeah, it was, it was a really interesting case of a uh, uh, very classical retrograde uh, with IVUS for evaluation, uh, very interesting. But uh, I have three comments. The first one that often we, we are going to see the failure of uh, uh, bypass, recent bypass surgery. So this is a big problem for us because uh, I think that uh, a failure of the Lima LAD after three, two or three months is not acceptable in this uh, at this moment, so uh, this is a very we, we need to 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 put a question on that. Of course, it's not, it's not normal to have a failure like that. The second point is that what uh, Alessio said that uh, uh, Gabriele said that uh, uh, usually in LED retrograde uh, we need to stand across the septal because the the disease is also this of the septal. So we need to use dual lumen that is is a uh, perfect uh, device for that and. Uh, the third point is that uh, this situation uh, you need uh, uh, to have uh, uh, very good uh, uh, knowledge about that, that you need to remove the RG3 before stenting because uh, uh, otherwise uh, uh, you have a right high risk to, to J your retrograde wire and uh, uh, you can be in big trouble at, uh, at after stenting. So very important. Uh, uh, it's like uh, when you have uh, uh, a sort of uh, uh, ipsilateral retrograde uh, uh, re-entry that we need to remove the, the retrograde wire, very important point. So let's go to the other cases, a sort of uh, a rapid flash of that. Uh, this is uh, uh, tips and tricks of the use of dual lumen uh, for taking the septal, when you have a, a, an unfavorable takeoff of the septal, this case was a, Austria, was a case I performed during a, a live case in a CTO Turin Summit some uh, years ago. 
uh, was uh, only the available this epicaria that is very close to the main and uh, I was not able to take with the with the Corsair and uh, uh, see you can see here that uh, is too close to the to the left main to the austral circumflex so in this case you put a wire in the circle you take a dual lumen and then the same wire than before easily went in the collateral and then you can perform your retrograde pci another case uh, more complex uh, uh, about this collateral you can see is another patient post surgery in which we have uh, um a failure of the graft to the right uh, only this collateral this epicardial collateral from the circ and uh, you can see the in the yellow uh, arrow how uh, is uh, uh, how is the, the the band of this collateral and the wire always went in this straight collateral it was not possible to to negotiate this uh, epicardial and the only way was put uh, a dual lumen if in over this uh, uh, wire and with the dual lumen uh, the Sion wire because at that time we were uh, suo 03 was not available and easily went in the septa in the collateral and then we switch with the corsair and uh, uh, we perform the pci another situation this is a, a, a strange case i performed seven years ago is a, a right that seems not so complex uh, but uh, i fail completely anti-grade and uh, you can see this big epicardial connection circ with this uh, huge band in the distal part here i try to negotiate this uh, epicardial but i have with the fine cross i have a rupture i put coil and if we go back we have a small epicardial at the uh, at the bottom is down to the to the big one you can see and i take i want to take the this small epicardial for for the retrograde and uh, uh, this uh, point was uh, really critical when you have the blue arrow i was not able to went to go with the sion blue with the sion at the, this small epicardial with the irregular mycocatheter so in this situation i take uh, the what I think that is the best one of dual loom is in, in Acera Rx, as uh, Alessio show you very well. You can see here an Acera Rx uh, in the epicardial that is uh, uh, coiled. You can see this is a Sion wire. This is a coil in the big one, and this is the Acera Rx that easily went retrograde. this is a real-time negotiation of the small epicardial one with the with the sion blue because it was uh, because of the help of dual lumen after that i crossed the epicardial i changed with the with the caravel and i performed the the retrograde pci this is the final result you can see the coil in the the big epicardial and uh, uh, the small one is uh, is a safe is perfectly without any damage this is an interesting case of uh, uh, occlusion at the level of bifurcation is close to the distal cap uh, i crossed with the with the corsair and uh, uh, i had to to go in the posterolateral branch then i was not able to go into the right i take a dual lumen retrograde through the septal this is the dual lumen crossing and then with dual lumen I was able to go with the ultimate bros. I think that in this this time, if I uh, I had to do again this case, I would take the recross for sure because I think that is uh, uh, we have two advantage. We have uh, two over over the wire uh, lumen, and uh, we can negotiate much much better this situation. So uh, this is a, a suggestion if uh, you need to take uh, dual lumen for that. Uh, think about uh, recross the new recross. Okay, so if you have uh, some comments, uh, uh, Gabriele and Alessio, and uh, about this uh, first session, please. Okay, just a, a quick uh, consideration. 
the use of the dual lumen microcatheter during retrograde approach it's not so frequent and uh, uh, i think that it's just for a very expert operator but uh, i think that one of the most important thing is that when you have to advance the, uh, retrogradely a dual lumen microcatheter through this uh, uh, very tiny epicardial collateral channel uh, the best dual lumen microcatheter should have a, a, um, a soft tip uh, and a small uh, crossing profile. So for this reason, I think that nowadays the best device is it's represented by an answer RX or even uh, by recross microcatheter as uh, underlined by Robert. What's your opinion, Alessio? Yeah, I agree with you. And uh... It's it's uh, it's uh, relatively free, relatively frequent, but it's I think uh, many times can be useful. Even sometimes when we maybe don't uh, we shouldn't we would not use it because sometimes to engage, for example, septals from the PDA, or in the cases that showed uh, Roberto, very often when you have epicardial collaterals from the left circumflex artery, sometimes we uh, the operator struggles trying to engage the collateral while using. Uh, the dual lumen it can be uh, made easy so i think we should always think that we have this kind of micro available in the cut lab and when we are uh, we are in trouble uh, engaging the collateral uh, we should think about that and regarding the use of these micro cutters from uh, retrograde so as uh, uh, to to cross i mean uh, uh, the collaterals uh, it, it is even uh, important to have this uh, kind of new generation micro cutters, the lumen micro cutters, because many times can be useful. As um, I, I have a limited uh, experience using these micro cutters in, for the epicardial collaterals. What do you think about that? I have experience in three cases of epicardial, and uh, I have to tell you that. Uh, uh, it depends on on the size on the tortuosity, but uh, you can you can try to cross. In some situation, you can try to to cross with the uh, with the recross or with the Nasser Rix with the stylet inside. But you have to be really careful about that because you know we know that uh, epicardial is really fragile my uh, channel. So uh, you can try to do that only if uh, really. Uh, you are an expert operator, as Gabriele said, and uh, uh, if you really think that uh, in this that epicardial is necessary to have a dual lumen distal to the to the channel, so uh, you have to think about that. Uh, and preferably, I would like uh, uh, not to use in the epicardial, but only the septal. But in these three cases, I had to do that, and uh, uh, I failed in one case. I succeed to 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 go with the with the micro catheter in the cardial so i think it's is a possibility okay. uh, roberto do you think that uh, using advancing recross could be safer compared to an answer uh, rx due to the uh, the due to the fact yeah. that you you you, you can advance uh, as a single lumen micro catheter to the, over the wire a lumen because if you advance the uh, an answer rx retrogradely through the epicardial channel you should advance it over the radio exchange uh, lumen i completely i completely agree with you and uh, the concept that I, I had to do that that crossing uh, when recross was not available so we have only uh, rx dual lumen but for sure, it's like uh, when we go retrograde in the septal to dilate with the balloon, uh, we, we can go with the RX, but the possibility to have uh, uh, two over the wire lumen uh, can protect uh, our uh, retrograde wire uh, like SUO03 much better. So uh, I suggest for sure if you need to go retrograde and uh, and and I think that it's very important what we discussed this morning to 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 fix some point of the use of dual lumen in uh, all the situation uh, in uh, in CTO and uh, also for people that is uh, less experienced and uh, I suggest for sure to 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 cover the wire with the recross as a single microcutter and then to use the second port for the second wire. 
sorry, Roberto, we have just uh, uh, one question focus on this uh, uh, topic. Uh, um, are there any added risk uh, uh, in, in terms of advancing uh, the dual, dual lumen microcatheter retrogradely? I think that we discussed this option, but do you think that which, what could be uh, the risk that you can have advancing the uh, retrogradely a dual lumen microcatheter? The main risk. Uh, uh, is that you can damage uh, the, the, you need, the risk is that you uh, are forced to push too much because uh, the, the profile is not like a, like a caravel, it's not like an answer pro X and uh, retrograde. So in very small collateral, you risk to, to, to have a damage of the, of the channel, the collateral, but in some situation in which uh, you can, you are not able to go, like for instance, a septal to the PDA and the wire always go in the distal PDA and not retrograde on the left to the, to the, to the crack, to the cracks of the right. In some situation, you need to, to have a my retrograde microcatheter dual lumen. So in that time, you, you need to be, uh, cautious about, uh, the risk and about how to man how to maneuver the this microcatheter but uh, uh, is a possibility to to do that and okay. i think uh, just to i think that uh, uh, anyway we should use it after dilating the channel with a single lumen microcatheter so uh, we should first cross with a single lumen and then if needed we switch to the dual lumen this is much safer i think as an approach because it, it, these microcatheters are not made to uh, direct micro channels to penetrate micro channels. This is a very important. This is a very important point, Alessio. Yeah, for sure. That uh, uh, also when I had to use in the, the epicardial, uh, I cross with the with the single micro catheter, uh, the epicardial, and then and then. Uh, but I need to have a second wire because the the wire always was uh, normally was uh, was a right, and the wire went distal and not proximal. And in this case, I switch with the dual lumen after crossing with the single lumen. I, you agree completely. You, 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 you are right. Uh, this is a very important point. Okay, well, now we can go to the second point, the microcatheter crossing of uh, challenging collateral. I think so that now you I, can see some other interesting and challenging cases. I think that uh, the next two points are uh, uh, really uh, important point and uh, uh, we can have many, many problem uh, uh, during our retrograde PCO and uh, uh, Gabriele and Alessio, they know very well uh, the, the risk. When you have a very challenging collateral, if, if the micro catheter doesn't cross the collateral, our retrograde procedure uh, will, will have a failure. We will have a fear about this procedure because uh, the key point is to cross the wire the collateral but we need to cross with the micro catheter so this is a very very important if you if you go retrograde with your micro catheter your success rate is more than 90 percent of case but if you're not able to cross with the micro catheter the collateral you are going to fail for sure the third point is then after crossing the collateral you need to cross the cto body uh, with the micro catheter and sometime is not possible. So I will show some case of the first point and uh, uh, Alessio and Gabriele will, uh, will comment uh, uh, th this, uh, this case. This is a case of uh, RCA with the complex, we have two occlusion, uh, more or less, uh, uh, from proximal to distal, and uh, we have uh, two big branches uh, that go to the posterolateral branch from the epicardial and uh, from the, to the PDA from this uh, uh, strange uh, septal connection. I start, uh, so here you can see the epicardial connection to the posterolateral branch and then the septal connection to the PDA. I start. Was this was the first time that I uh, I used the enhance, the new Enhancer Pro X, the NX3 series, and this is uh, was a great great behavior of this uh, new micro catheter. You can see here the the crossing with the Suo03. 
of this uh, complex uh, epicardial you can see on the on the right this is a real time uh, fluoroscopy storing uh, was not easy and then you can see the sewer tree this is very important if gabriella want to comment uh, about uh, what you have to do to avoid the risk of, of uh, wire prolapse, uh, sewer zero three prolapse in this epicardial. Yeah, absolutely. You you don't have to push the wire because uh, uh, in this case the wire can prolapse. You you just have to to advance gently with uh, with small rotation the wire and then the wire following the heartbeat uh, can find the correct way. But uh, mm, you don't have to push the wire because it's very fragile, and uh, it's uh, it was developed just to just for a retrograde epicardial collateral crossing, and uh, mm, for uh, its property, it's a wire that is able to gain the the lumen of the artery spontaneously. So you have just to wait and follow the heartbeat. Yeah, great. And and importantly, uh, if you can see on the left, uh, it's impossible to try to cross all the all the collateral without advancing the microcatheter. You agree? Because yeah, this, in this situation, the, the wire is too floppy and uh, and make a loop and will uh, will, yeah. will will make a sort of uh, jail, a sort of knuckle. So yeah, what, and then, what we need to do then, in the, in that point? So. How can we move the micro the enhancer uh, pro X three in the, in this epicardial? How is the how is the, the 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 movement for the operator? You can spin. You you need to no. spin or not? No, this is not a spinning microcatheter. You can rotate it gently, and but the um, the microcatheter is not made for spinning. So you can rotate it, and uh, at the same time you have to push gently. And then the microcatheter can advance, but uh, operator should avoid to spin this microcatheter. Great. This is the the crossing of the of the Anasser, uh, Pro X in this epicardial. You can see this is a real time. Look at how was uh, I was really surprised about the the the, the behavior of this new microcatheter at that time. Yeah, it's a very <clears throat> um, interesting microcatheter, especially in a retrograde uh, uh, crossing of tortoise epicardial channel. Right. Well, its performance, it's very good, especially in these uh, uh, cases of tortoise uh, channel. Yeah. I think it's the, best, the best test for a microcatheter is such a tortoise uh, long uh, epicardial collateral only is a very good I mean, if it, only if it works very well you can do such a, a complex route so I think that it's a very good demonstration of the, how it works I yeah think. i think that the trackability of this microcatheter it's very high this is interesting that, uh, uh, probably you don't think that uh, i'm true but uh, you, you have to know that uh, I'm, I'm going to tell the truth. I punch a retrograde with the Astato 20 because it was so we believe. We believe. <laughs> because it was impossible to do with that. With a, I do a step up retrograde and uh, at the end I need to push to, to push with the Astato. And, uh, and then this is a, a classical reverse cut with the Gideon re-entry. The Gideon uh, uh, Hydro 7 French was... Uh, was uh, easy to re-enter and this is the the result after standing in the postal branch and alessio what what is that uh, what can you see that uh, is not uh, is not uh, perfect in this situation we have an occlusion of the big uh, pda you can see on the right and uh, what what would you do now at this uh, at this point, Alessio? Yes, of course. The point is that we should always uh, uh, try to get a complete revascularization. So we should try to, uh, if if it is possible, during the same procedure, you should uh, try to open even the, the remaining uh, occluded vessel, like uh, in this case. 
Well, it, it, uh, of course, it depends on the case because you can try to, to do an integrator. Uh, maybe I was guided the puncture of the of the proximal cap. Otherwise, you should uh, go retrograde to try to open it. Uh, depends on the case. In this case, it seems that uh, uh, the feeling is, is up to the to the main vessel. So, but it's a fully stented. So. Uh, I will need some other projection to understand better the takeoff of the PDA. Okay, so we have the PDA is very uh, is a very high bifurcation at the level of the mid of the right, and I think uh, we can you can see no you cannot see here, but it's very interesting because uh, Alessio is blind he he didn't see the case before and uh, he didn't know that I I will try I I tried I was guided uh, uh, puncture integrate uh, as he said it was a brilliant uh, uh, strategy of Alessio but I failed I failed I tried to put the Ivus in the in the was because it was so big the the right and in this situation I was not able to puncture uh, even if I have Ivus and dual lumen in the same uh, time for a question of time I, I, I cut that part so I had to go retrograde and uh, I take this septal. You can see this is a, is a septal epicardial. Uh, it's not completely septal, you know, uh, because of the, the, the curse. And I I had the same strategy. So SUO03 and uh, uh, an answer. So if you can comment, Alessio, about uh, this uh, crossing, uh, about this uh, collateral, tiny and tortuous. Yes, uh, uh, just to come to the, the, regarding the previous uh, issue, the, of course, after when you have done already a retrograde approach, you are normally tired. So you try to do an, an anti-gate approach with the Agus guided. So this, this is the common way, I think, to approach such a situation. But many times, the, the, the only way you can get the final result is from a second retrograde approach. So that's a clear demonstration of what uh, we are discussing about. Here the septal is very tortuous. It's very tortuous. It's a proximal septal. So as it happens with proximal septals or very distal septals, there is an epicardial part of the root. And here is very tortuous and long. So of course the suit 03 is the perfect wire for such a, a collateral. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes you have to switch, for example, to a Sion. But uh, I agree with you that suit 03 is the first uh, choice. And then I think that uh, I haven't seen the case truly because, uh, and uh, uh, I'm very curious about the second uh, uh, use of this uh, answer for X in such a complex uh, epicardio. So let us show, let us uh, see. Also because, uh, also because, uh, believe me, this was the same micro catheter than I used for the for the the other uh, collateral. So I didn't change with the new one. Because uh, it was in very good condition, so after retrograde uh, re-entry in the guiding catheter and stenting, uh, I used the same uh, Enhancer Pro X uh, retrograde, and you can see on the left uh, uh, that was not easy. I need uh, uh, this is a situation which you need to have a slow rotation and to wait, to wait, and uh, if you rotate slowly and uh, and you wait, uh, it, you have a little a small push for sure. But you have you can see the advancement of the micro catheter in this uh, in this uh, collateral. You can see very slowly advancement uh, in this very tortuous and complex. Yeah, and then this is Gabriele. Yeah, yeah, we have a question. We have a question that could be interesting at this moment because uh, we have a question from Hafsane Mohammadi. Uh, uh, he want to, she wants to know the difference between the announcer uh, Prix and uh, uh, Caravel. So I think uh, the most important difference is the, um, um, the, the tip. I mean, the, 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 uh, the, um, the tip uh, uh, penetration power of the uh, uh, announcer Prix it's a uh, uh, higher compared to the caravel so the tip of the caravel is quite fragile and i would like to know your opinion roberto and if you can explain other difference between these uh, uh, two device yeah this is a very a very good question and i will show you some other the, the next two cases i think are really interesting for that 
Uh, I have to tell you that uh, uh, for me, it, there's, there's not only one microcatheter for Epicardia. I think that you have the same uh, uh, feeling, uh, but sometimes you can have strange behavior. Sometimes you fail with one and you succeed with the second one, probably because the first one is quite, uh, have quite fatigue. And uh, the second one, uh, uh, you, you make a sort of a half job with the first one and then the second one complete the job. And maybe the next case uh, is the opposite. So it's not uh, always uh, an answer X better than Caravel, but I can, I can tell you that uh, I was surprised about uh, uh, the, the performance of this microcatheter. And the difference is that for me, uh, we have much more uh, uh, f support, and uh, even if we have a really gr great crossability with the and uh, with the the Pro X, also the support is much better because Caravel, when you have a really complex uh, classified uh, CTO, you have not enough uh, force and push with the Caravel. And uh, what about the tip? What what yeah. was your feeling with the tip? Is what, yeah, I think that that the, the, this tip is really, really good for uh, for uh, uh, adapting to the collateral and uh, is less fragile than Caravel. Uh, also, because you know that, uh, I, for instance, I don't use any more Caravel for antegrade because uh, of the risk of fracture or tip fracture. So I think that the tip uh, of the Caravel is the sort of uh, uh, Achilles heel of the of the of this microcatheter. So you can have a, a sort at the level of transition of the tip, you can have a fracture and uh, uh, you can have a bend. So I think that uh, the tip of the Pro X is better than, uh, than the color one. Thank you. So Roberto, sorry, you said that uh, we should not spin the Pro X uh, during uh, crossing of the set of the collateral. So because we, this is a, it's not a, it's not, uh, it's not a coiled uh, like, uh, like a Corsair, like a Turnpike LP, like Mamba. It's not a coil microcatheter, but it's a, it's a double braid with the, with the very particular characteristic. And uh, you, you can have slow rotation. Uh, you slow rotate, you wait, you have a little bit of push, but uh, very slowly. And uh, you can see that uh, the microcatheter can advance after some second by himself. And uh, because I think that uh, the push, the, the structure of this microcatheter is really fantastic. When when he gained the position, it's very difficult that uh, he can lose the position uh, going back. This is very, for Caravel. Caravel, you can cross sometimes, but uh, when you push with your your stiff wire, you have a, a, a sort of a, a coming back of the microcatheter because he has not enough support. And this is a great difference for me. And also in this case, uh, I need to puncture with the Gladius. And this is a, uh, the, the real-time uh, fluoroscopy storing of the puncture of the Gladius. And then at this point, it's important because we need to puncture the strength strut. And uh, after that, we need to advance. This is the, The IVUS confirmation then uh, that retrograde gladius is inside of the stand strut. You can see here. But at this time, we need to push the, the Pro X inside the stand because we need to go retrograde. We need to, and uh, this was the, after trapping the retrograde wire with the balloon, this is uh, how easily the Pro X with the good uh, trapping technique cross the stand strut again, and then we were able to finish our procedure with the with the bifurcation stenting at, at very very nice result. Another interesting case was a very really recent is a case of uh, I think uh, ten days ago when I came back from my accident of my eye. It was uh, done by in the cat lab of my friend uh, Fabrizio Hugo and it was uh, really a, a complex LED post Lima occlusion it was a, a long occlusion of the LED in two point distal. You can see we have a sort of, a, of, a, of a, an island in the middle of the LED. We have an occlusion of the distal part 
of the LED here before the diagonal and the occlusion in the proximal part of the LED. And we have a lima failure. So was uh, in this situation, uh, sometimes you have a sort of, uh, it's quite impossible to, to go through the occlusion because of the lima uh, anastomosis. And uh, we try integrate, but uh, we fail. We were not able to, pu to pu puncture. We're not able to knuckle with the filler XTA, with Gaia 3, with Gladius. And uh, we need to go retrograde. And uh, the problem is that uh, in this right, the collateral is a sort of this epicardial collateral to the LED. But we were not able to, to put the, the wire without the dual lumen. So this is like uh, uh, the previous case, uh, an answer rigs and uh, uh, I think a Sion wire for, uh, to gain the ostium of the, of the collateral that is a disease. After that, uh, we change with the Enhancer Pro X retrograde and SUO tree. This is an answer Pro X very close to the SUO. And then this is the, the crossing with SUO 03. At this time, uh, this, this is the, the advancement of Pro X. Uh, I cut the first part, but you can see here how uh, he has the, the, the gave a, a, good, a very strong support uh, for our retrograde procedure because uh, it's not like uh, in this situation, it's not, it's not like Caravel that, uh, how, by which we, we have a very good uh, profile of the Caravel, but uh, a lack of, uh, uh, of uh, backup support. You can see here uh, the, the Pro X is fixed in the retrograde uh, LED, in the distal LED. We cross with Gaia second the first occlusion. We gain the diagonal branch. And then we need to make the connection. This is the failure with the Gaia 3. And uh, we need to knuckle with the CP12. This is uh, the knuckling of CP12. But doing this maneuver, you need to have a very, you know, uh, a strong uh, support of your micro cutter. Otherwise, when you push your uh, stiff wire, everything go, go back. Do you agree, Alessio? Yes, absolutely. So it's a very complex case because uh, we rarely use the Confianza Pro 12 for knuckling, but when there are very calcified lesions, uh, sometimes we have to do it. So it is a demonstration of the complexity of the occlusion. And then, and then Gabriele can... Uh, can do some comment. This is the re-enter with the in the Gideon. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm, I'm quite. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I don't, not, not really surprised because uh, I'm not surprised. But um, the knuckle with the Conquest Pro 12, it's not so frequent. So <laughs> it's a very interesting case. Uh, but uh, despite this, uh, the wire, the most one of the most important thing now is that the next step, because you went retrogradely into the uh, LED and you 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 perform a retrograde dissection technique. So now we 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 should be sure that the wire re-enter into the anti-grade guiding catheter through the true lumen. So in this case, as we can see on the right side of the the slide, uh, Roberto advanced the uh, um, guiding catheter extension just to be sure that the re-enter when he achieved the, 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 the connection be between the anti-grade and retrograde through lumen, uh, uh, the, the wire that enters into the guiding catheter extension, it's a very safe maneuver in order to avoid a dissection of the left main. Uh, and the, but for a question of time, I uh, cut and we have uh, the, the two wires that are in the same space. The re-enter was good and uh, this is the re very good result of opening after stenting. So this is a way uh, to explain how, how great it was also in this situation, in this really complex, uh, hard C or CTO, the behavior of the ProX. And then the last case of ProX uh, in the, is a, also a frequent, is a case of uh, one week ago was a, a paraostial occlusion that after the, the operator make a, a, an injection with the ampers left, you can see uh, an osteal dissection 
very bad. And so we need to go retrograde and we have only a Picardia Tortoise channel. And we didn't have uh, an answer Pro X uh, uh, 155. So we, uh, we start uh, correctly with the Caravel and SWO3. This is the crossing with SWO3 with the Caravel. Here you can see the Caravel. But I failed. I failed to cross because I was not able to cross this band. The band you can see here with the, the suo, the band of the epicardial. And uh, uh, even if I have the wire very, very proximal to the right, uh, it was impossible to, to cross this part with the caravel. I switched with the fine cross 150 and uh, uh, we fail. And then the, the, my colleague, remember that he has only one Enhancer Pro X uh, short for anti-grade, 135 in, the, in, his, uh, uh, in his room. And uh, he went down on one floor to, to get this, uh, this single piece of uh, Pro X, uh, very short. And uh, uh, this is the, the behavior with the Enhancer Pro X. Uh, it was the fantastic sensation of the crossing of this uh, uh, microcatheter after the failure of the previous uh, microcatheter. And, but at this time, uh, we need to, we can switch the Sion uh, the SUO3 with the Sion Blue extra support because we crossed the collateral, but we cannot advance the Pro X because it was a short one. And then we take again the Caravel. You can see how easily after the crossing of Pro X and after the, after the, with the extra support wire, uh, how easily it was able to cross this epicardial. And then the procedure was done with the, with the re-entry, I don't remember which wire, and uh, a good uh, final that uh, just uh, five seconds to show. So I think that uh, this session uh, for me it was um, is is the key point of retrograde, and uh, we need to know very well. We need we need to have more than one microcatheter for epicardial, and uh, every microcatheter a different. Uh, uh, um, characteristic, but uh, with this new one, is uh, I think is a, a great surprise for me. Gabriele? Yeah, I think that uh, as, uh, um, as we discuss during this third part of uh, uh, presentation, uh, during retrograde approach, you should uh, use uh, and you should know how to use several different devices and several different uh, uh, micro catheter. Maybe um, each of one has uh, different features, uh, trackability or a crossing profile or support and operators should know uh, uh, this difference and how to use uh, one uh, in spite of uh, another one and uh, or as you show just a few slides ago, sometimes you need to change the first micro catheter with the second one and then you have to rechain for the previous one so uh, there are several tips and tricks but uh, uh, the first issue is that uh, uh, you should know the difference between uh, uh, the um, different device or different micro catheter great so the next session when micro catheter doesn't cross the cto so this case will be explained by that by alessio that is a surprise he, he didn't know that but uh, is nice. So, Alessio, this is a case of a uh, uh, LED CTO. Uh, is a complex case because we have a stent uh, was stenting the uh, LED diagonal. So we have a CTO of the LED here with the stent across, and we have this calcified uh, long occlusion. So I start with the uh, Corsair but Corset doesn't cross the septal branch. Okay, this is a free, uh, oh, uh, relatively frequent uh, uh, CTO that we face because many times uh, these patients uh, present with an acute uh, coronary syndromes involving the proximal, first proximal LED, first diagonal, so the operator just stent, uh, uh, as it has been done in this case with a long stent, so it makes a sort of ceiling of the uh, CTO. 
So then in order to perform CTO design, like in this case, you have to, of course, uh, penetrate the CTO and then go through the stance struts. So, um, uh, so this is a, a, a considered a classical case of CTO PCI. In this case, you have, so you, you are in a situation where the Corsair doesn't cross the septal branch. So there are many options that you can use in such a case. So you can, of course, improve the, um, the uh, um, passive and active support. So make, uh, we can uh, use an anchoring uh, technique, for, um, anchoring uh, volume. Uh, to increase the pushability of the micro cutter, or you can change the micro cutter here using a coiled one. So we could use a, um, uh, like uh, another micro cutter, not coiled one, like for example the Nancer uh, Pro X, uh, or some, sometimes it's something that you cannot, non, uh, we cannot uh, predict. So sometimes when a fine cross, such a case can cross. So of course, the first option is to increase the support, so maybe doing an anchoring. Or you, you change uh, macro cutter. So you know, I didn't know the case truly. So in this case, you did uh, you, you change the macro cutter for a fine cross, and uh, as many uh, many times happens, it was successful in crossing the septal. But of course, yeah. the fine cross is not. Uh, a pen I don't consider it, of course, a penetration micro cutter. So sometimes, after crossing a septal, you are in troubles in order to penetrate the CTO, because of course you cannot. Uh, it's not a coiled micro cutter, so sometimes there is, there is some defeat in order to perform the uh, CTO crossing. So, um, so you decide here to perform. See, yes, please. Any comment? No, no. Okay, go on. So, so you perform here a reverse card. So I, I guess you tried to do a, a direct crossing uh, because in this case uh, you can do a, a direct crossing with Arus Gather Reentry. Probably you, it was not successful, so you decided to puncture from anti-grade and you perform the uh, reverse cart. And as I can see, you use a, a UB3 to, to, to penetrate the CTO. So then you probably, uh, I don't know, did you use any cut extension like the Gideon or you just uh, uh, broke the uh, retrograde wire into the anti-grade micro -cutter. You externalized the wire. Okay, you, you as far as I can see, you advance the ultimate growth, the proximal segment of the LED to the left main. Okay, and you externalize into the guiding cabinet. So a direct uh, uh, externalization. So then, let me see. Okay, so, uh, okay, so this is another nice, very nice trick. Uh, so you try to penetrate with the macro cutter, it failed, both Corsair and, uh, um, uh, and Fine Cross. You try the tipping technique, it means that you try uh, to, uh, uh, to try, uh, you, did you already add the macro cutter into the uh, anti -guide, guide or still in the... No, I, I have the retrograde wire in the guide and catheter, but I was not able to cross with the micro catheter, so... Uh, I try to, to, to do the tipping in order to avoid externalization. So try you to... try it into the tipping into the vessel body within the CTO. You no, have... no, in the guiding catheter. I have the retrograde okay. wire okay. in the so guiding. So advance the macro cutter into the anti-grade uh, guide. I was not able. I was not able to advance the micro catheter in the... You were not able to do the tipping. Yes, because because I have the retrograde wire in the guiding catheter, but the micro catheter was not able to cross the classification. It was not possible more than uh, fail. You yeah. could not do the tipping because there were not there, you didn't have the uh, micro into the anti guide. Yeah, and no. then and then I I, I, I switch with the, try to dilate the retrograde with the very good balloon, and this is the the dilatation. This is a new balloon from Terumo. Yeah, you can see here. I was was not was a, a case of of uh, I think uh, two years ago, uh, but you can see here was able to advance and I dilate uh, uh, the the body of the of the CTO. Is it an over the wire or rapid exchange? Uh, no, rapid exchange. Rapid exchange. Okay. Yes, it's a very low profile balloon, so you were able to cross the CTO. Yeah, yeah. And then after the dilatation of the balloon, you can see here, yeah. I was able to advance the Corsair easily. 
So yeah, and very much was stretch, was yeah. the, the, the dilatation of the of the of the cap of the body of the CTO. After that, the this was the the final good result after stenting the bifurcation. So it wasn't was nice because of these uh, uh, tips and tricks of changing microcatheter up for the for the septal and changing technique for the CTO body because it was an un uncrossable. Uh, uh cto body by the microcatheter and then another this very complex case and we can discuss a uh, comment with gabriele and uh was a, a circ uh occlusion seems not so long but really calcified and uh integrate the previous failure i failed again this is uh, my attempt with fine cross corsair and gaia and conquest and then i switched to retrograde via epsilateral channel from the from uh, distal LED and uh, I succeed to cross it with the the filler XTA now Gabriele which is the next step huh. oh, it's a very complex case because uh, you you failed to advance you, you were able to advance the uh, retrograde wire so it was uh, some progression uh, compared to the anti-grade approach but the problem was the same you were not able to advance the uh, microcatheter not really uh, through the uh, collateral channel but uh, uh, through the cto body so uh, this is uh, <clears throat> unfortunately a frequent situation especially in a, a high calcified lesion but you you were in a very good position with the retrograde guide wire so you can try to uh, in this case uh, you can try to advance the retrograde guide wire directly into the anti-grade guiding catheter. And in this case, because uh, you are in a, a, a ipsilateral setting, as uh, we are seeing on the left side of the screen, you advance a second guide wire, uh, a second guiding catheter to perform the ping-pong technique. Because once the retrograde guide wires enters into the anti-grade guiding catheter, you can try to trap the wire and then you you have a strong support that could be useful in terms of uh, advancing the retrograde microcatheter in through the CTO body. But sometimes it's not enough. So uh, um, in this case, you had some problem to advance the, uh, the retrograde guide wire into the integrate guiding catheter. So I think that you perform the uh, capture technique. Uh, I mean. To, to capture the retrograde guide wire into the circ, that sometimes it's uh, easier than uh, uh, re-enter into the anti-grade guiding catheter. So for this reason, you advanced uh, a guiding catheter extension through the anti-grade guiding catheter in order to, to capture the retrograde guide wire. Isn't it? Great, great. In this case, uh, we use only one one trapping balloon, not what to explain your fantastic work paper, uh, the, the du double uh, trapping balloon for uh, in the situation in which the microcatheter uh, falls down after the re-entry in the guiding mm -hmm. catheter. Mm -hmm. In a situation that is, a, is a before, uh, we are not able to cross the CTO body. Even if uh, I change the Corsair with the fine cross, uh, even if I trap, with the ping pong technique and with the capture technique, as you explained very well in the circle uh, with the guide extension, no way, no way to do that. After that, yeah. we have a, a retrograde wire in the in the anti -guide guiding catheter. Uh, what do you think about tipping? Is uh, can be useful in this situation? Uh, your next step, uh, because you are not able to do. Uh, you can try to dilate as uh, uh, I tried before with the, the uh, ray uh to to try to to crack the calcification and uh, uh is one option i think uh and i try i fail also to dilate with the the balloon retrograde then tipping is a possibility what do you think okay tipping it could be a possibility but you should be very lucky because it's the same situation of the previous case the microcatheter is not yet into the anti-grade guiding catheters. So the manipulation of the retrograde guide wire is not so easy. You can try to find, to advance the retrograde guide wire without the, the, uh, 
the support of the uh, micro catheter, you can try to advance and to to advance the tip into the to advance the wire into the tip and integrate guide catheter. Sometimes could happen, but uh, it's not so frequent, and you should be very lucky. And then, okay. Yeah, but this is a situation which uh, uh, I think that when you have uh, also you don't want to force your epicardial, you can take uh, leave your retrograde microcatheter uh, distal to the guiding catheter, and you push. You are you have your retrograde wire in the integrated guiding catheter, like in this situation, and you can try to 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 enter with the with the bare integrated uh, microcatheter. <laughs> And uh, to perform this, uh, this so called tip in. So you can see we have a fine cross, antegrade, and uh, we enter in the retrograde wire in the RG3 with the fine cross here. And we advance the fine cross, antegrade. But the problem is that it's so calcified that the fine cross was not able to uh, to go over the classification of the CTO body. So we have two fine cross, one in front of the other. This is integrate, this is retrograde in the Five yellow. Five meter of calcium. Yeah. So the TPIN is a fantastic technique when you are not able, or for instance, when, when you have your microcatheter that is short, you are not able to advance in the guiding catheter. And you can do the tip in with the, your retrograde wire in the integrate microcatheter. But you need to push your integrate microcatheter over distal to the CTO body. In this situation, it was not possible to do that because of the classification. The only chance was to remove the, the retrograde wire and try to enter with the rotor wire to do what we call the rendezvous technique. So it's the opposite of the tip in. When you, the tip in, to remember, is when the retrograde wire enter in the integrate microcatheter. The rendezvous is when the integrate wire enter in the retrograde microcatheter. You can see here. So the rotor wire enter in the retrograde fine cross. And then you remove the, the wire and uh, we were able to do rotational terectomy with the protection of the collateral, with the fine cross retrograde. And after the, the, the rotablator, everything was, was easy and this with the, the good result. So this is a very complex case with several tips and tricks, but sometimes you need to, to think about that. Yeah. Uh, of course, this in this case, you needed to use the rotablator. So it was a very complex calcified vision, but uh, other options that you can use uh, when uh, uh, the anti-grade microcatheter does not follow, of course, is to use a, di a different microcatheter because fine cross is not perfect in such a situation to be advanced uh, as, after the pin because the penetration uh, force is uh, lower than other microcatheters. Mm -hmm. Another option is to use the so-called facilitated tip in technique that we we published some months ago. That is to advance uh, an extra wire into the anti-grade bare microcatheter just to reinforce the uh, microcatheter to be advanced uh, on the retrograde wire. So adding a second wire in the anti-grade bare microcatheter can uh, facilitate the advancement to the hard regions. So these are the options that you can use in such a case. The, the, the fine cross anti-grade has a wire inside for sure because you are not able to, to increase the stiffness of the microcatheter. This is a very good and good point. Normally, the, the, the technique of the tip in, you need to put a second wire integrate, not completely outside of the fine cross, for sure, because you need to, the tip of the microcatheter, the integrate, have to be free for entering the retrograde wire, but you need to increase the, the support with the with the with your wire. So I completely agree with your, with your point. So. Uh, just, I just think a quick question uh, from from the from the chat before leaving the the uh, the line to Suzanne is uh, uh, subintima subintima plaque modification could be an option in this case or not. If you are not able to cross the directly the CTO, you can try to go subintima, but it could be an option. But at, when you switch to retrograde approach, I think that uh, the the strategy that you follow was the uh, the best strategy, but what about the subintimal modification of the plaque? 
Yeah, I think that uh, in case of failure of this, uh, yeah, I followed this strategy because I was, uh, I, I crossed with the retrograde wire and tried to obtain uh, uh, recanalization in the in the in the calcification of the of the occlusion. But uh, if you fail, you can you can try to have uh, subintima modification. But the problem is that when you have so uh, huge calcification, sometimes it's quite complex to try to go subintimal. You need to to have uh, some complex technique, but uh, that we use like a base. You have to dissect proximal with a bigger balloon than the vessel size and try to go retrograde and uh, try to, to have a sort of reverse cut outside of the calcium. So this is a, another good option. Absolutely. So I would like to introduce Suzanne Lohr from IMDS that will uh, show us uh, uh, some technical feature of the uh, Enhancer Pro X microcatheter. Please, Suzanne. Thank you very much. So my name is Suzanne indeed. Um, as an, I'm the, an engineer at IMDS, I've been working on many of the IMDS devices. And based on today's topic of this webinar of retrograde PCI, I would like to share uh, some of the design specifics of the updated NX3 series of the Enhanced Pro X. Um, so the Enhanced Pro X is a single Luma microcatheter. And what is critical to the performance of single luma microcatheters? We believe there are four main attributes, um, and they're shown over here. We uh, have been focusing during the development of the NX3 series uh, on those four attributes a lot. Uh, and also we did head to head in vitro testing based on those uh, attributes, performance indicators uh, versus um, our main competitors. So, of course, um, single luma microcatheters should support the guide wires in the first place. Um, so the guide wire should be able to cross lesions and a microcatheter should support the guide wire. And in order to reach uh, the lesion, the force transmission is very important. It should be as efficient as possible. Um, another thing, uh, in, in order to reach the lesion, the microcatheter should be able to track the coronary vessels, and that is not a problem in the first place. Usually for any kind of device, but in a retrograde approach and for very uh, torches tracking, it is very important that the device can follow torches uh, vessels. Uh, one other thing is that once the, micro, the guide wire excuse me, has crossed lesions, the microcatheter should have high tip penetration forces in order to cross lesions as well. So let's go uh, into the objectives of um, the NX3 series of the Enhanced Pro X. So during the development, our primary objectives were um, based on the performance indicators that I've shown in this previous slide. So first of all, um, the single luma microcatheter, so the NX3 should have optimal guide wire support uh, in order to uh, let the guide wire penetrate across occluded vessels. Um, also, the microcatheter itself should have very high tip penetration power to cross the proximal gap of an occlusion after the guide wire cross, has crossed, because you don't want your microcatheter be, to be a limit, limiting factor um, when your guide wire has crossed the lesion, as we have seen in uh, the cases that were shown previously. Um, third point is that uh, high push efficiency is very important in order to cross very tight vessel segments. Um, and in order to reach your target lesion. So we believe that those three uh, objectives are, um, should all be possible also in a retrograde setting. So after crossing long and very tortuous retrograde tracks. So during the development of the NX3 series, the updated version, um, we really focused on those um, obje objectives mainly. And also during the in vitro testing uh, that we did versus the main competitors, and I will share um, the test results with you now as well. So the first one is guide wire lesion penetration, um, meaning uh, giving guide wire support. Um, and we have tested uh, the NX3 series Enhanced Pro X versus the Corsa Pro, the Caravel, and the Turnpike LP, as you can see on the bottom of the, the figures. We have tested two different uh, guide wires, the Fielder XT, which is soft, and the Miracle Bros 12, which is stiffer. Um, and as you can see from the uh, graphs, which uh, 
the bars on the graphs, which are showing the guide wire tip penetration forces, we see that the microcatheters by itself, um, they give support to the guide wire because they increase the, the forces of the guide wire, uh, of, of the guide wire penetration, tip penetration. And um, for the Fielder XT, the Enhancer Pro X NX3 is giving the highest support. Um, but what is more most interesting is that on the right side, um, you see the dark blue bar. The blue bar is uh, the NX3 series itself. And the dark blue bar is a combination, a hybrid version of the NX3 um, microcatheter with the guide wire. Um, this can be uh, created by um, the locking device, which is added to the uh, NX3 series uh, and the Enhancer Pro X. And I will explain more about this uh, functioning later on. Um, but you can see that the uh, guide wire tip penetration forces are uh, more than 10 times higher compared to the competitors. Also, looking at the Miracle Bros, um, the devices are giving support, more support to the uh, guide wire tip. Um, the Pro X and X3 together with the Clarifel give the highest support. But again, when we're looking at the hybrid version of the NX3 series with the guide wire, you can see that the forces created are uh, three to five times higher compared to the competitors. So this shows that with even a soft guide wire, you can, um, by locking, uh, by using this locking device on the NX3 series, you can create way higher tip penetration forces of the guide wire um, by using the NX3 microcatheter. So when we can give um, while well, we can give this high support to the guide wire, it's of course very important um, to uh, have very high push efficiency because you need to be able to reach um, your lesion. So the Enhancer Pro X NX3 series is uh, embedded with dual braiding and core wire technology. Um, this together provides very efficient push transfer. And also this is what we have tested in uh, the second test. So on the bars, you see the force that is transferred. So we have been um, uh, applied, uh, we've been applying forces to the microcatheters, same forces and the forces that were um, created in the tip of the microcatheters were measured over here. So we see that um, as we were expecting, the caravel has um, yeah, relatively low forces created because we know the caravel can track um, torches vessels quite well, but it doesn't have this high push and it has a soft tip. Corsair, as expected, is already giving higher forces. Turnpike, which has quite some power, gives also quite high forces, but uh, the NX3 series, uh, updated series of uh, Enhanced Pro X NX3 has uh, the highest forces transferred uh, from the proximal to the distance side of the device. I see there is a question. Why does half Carabell not have more support than the Corsair? Um, we see over here, so it's a bit depending on the on the guide wire. Oh, the Caravel is having um, higher forces compared to the Corsair Pro. More than the Caravel. So those values are quite close to each other, that in the first place. So we know that the, the support given by microcatheters is for sure higher if you use a microcatheter than a guide wire itself. So that is the what we have seen mainly and that the differences between the devices are not that high. So what we mainly want to show with this guide wire lesion penetration is that with the hybrid version of the NX3 series, we can increase um, guide wire penetration forces up to 10 times depending on the, the stiffness uh, and the tip load of the guide wire itself. And as I mentioned, we will explain a bit more um, in a few slides later. So what is also very important is retrograde crossing or very uh, long and highly tortuous retrograde tracks. Um, you can see on the image on the left that we have a very tortuous uh, pathway. And we've been testing again the Corsa Pro, the Caravel, and the Turnpike uh, versus the updated NX3 series of the Enhanced Pro X. And um, we could see that the Caravel could very nicely um, follow the tortuous path um, of the coronaries, but it lacks push to, con to keep continuing. Um, as expected, the Corsa Pro and the Turnpike were Turnpike LP were giving, uh, we're reaching it uh, way further, but not as far as the 
NX3 series of the Enhancer Pro X. So why is it able to reach the furthest? Um, during the development, we really try to have a very gradual um, change in stiffness and flexibility over the length of the catheter. So the very flexible uh, distal end of the caravel is what is very beneficial, but um, so the flexibility can be very high distally, but it should uh, be uh, more stiff in the proximal side of the catheter because it should have a lot of push. And how did we manage to obtain that is by having this core wire, which is embedded between the two layers of braiding uh, over the full length of the device. All this together gives us very high push efficiency and by the right um, um, tailored design of the, the change in flexibility over the length of the device, um, this is giving the optimal combination to be able to have enough uh, flexibility, but also enough push to reach very um, distal lesions. And one other thing that is very important, you can have a very good performing device itself, but if the, the um, lubricity is very um, low, this is really uh, important for following the coronaries because hydro so therefore we have very low friction due to the improved hydrophilic coating on the device. So a very slippery device is way easier to follow torches tracks um, than a device which is um, not that lubricious. So the last testing that I would like to share with you is micro catheter tip lesion penetration power. So uh, when your guide wire has crossed a lesion, um, it is important that your device uh, can have enough penetration power to cross the lesion as well. So again, we see on the bars on the graph, uh, the micro catheter tip penetration forces. Um, after uh, a very tortuous coronary path tracking of 23 centimeters, um, there was an, a simulated occlusion which could be adjusted based on the, the penetration power that the micro catheter had. Um, so uh, the guide wire had crossed and then the device should, uh, should cross um, a lesion as well. And we have been measuring what kind of forces could be created by the devices. And we see that um, the Caravel and the Corsair, they don't have very high um, penetration forces, which we also know because they are relatively they feel relatively floppy, so they can, um, they are of course very good devices, but they have some lack if we, they have crossed very tortuous pathway, they should still have very high uh, power to cross a lesion. And that's what we've seen is not that always that high. For the Corsa Pro, we also know this has to do with the relatively um, a high profile of the rest of the device. So the, the end of the tip is small, but after that, the rest of the device should track as well. Um, and if it's too big, you also cannot have enough. Um, yeah, it's not optimal for the crossing. The Turnpike LP is already giving uh, quite higher penetration forces, but when we are looking at the NX3 series, uh, we see that we are uh, even two times higher than the Turnpike LP. So this means that um, after reaching the distal lesions, the NX3 series still has the strong measures to penetrate um, tight lesions. I would like to also show um, in the next slide, a movie where we tested um, the NX3 series of the Enhanced Pro X versus the Caravel and the Corsair Pro. And you can see in the behavior of the shafts of the devices, and you can see the differences between the, the devices. So we have a um, simulated uh, occlusion on the left uh, down the corner in the bottom. So both devices are on the left, you see the um, NX3 series of the Enhanced Pro X and on the right, the Caravel, and both devices are following the, the tracks quite nicely, but then they have this, to cross this sharp bend and then um, they have to cross an occlusion. And the Enhanced Pro X would cross easily. And for the Caravel, you see that the shaft is backing up completely because it is not able to transfer this force from proximal to the distal tip. Here again, we see the same video on the left of the Enhanced Pro X and on the right, we see the the Corsair Pro of Assign. Um, again, it is very nicely following the, the torches track. Um, and then after crossing the shore bend, the Enhanced Pro X is able to cross. And the Corsair, again, you see that it's backing up and it's not able to cross the occlusion. It doesn't have this high power that can be transferred toward the distal end.
Um, I've been talking about the hybrid version of the NX3 series with um, the locking device, and I would like to um, show a movie of that as well. Um, so the, there are two techniques that can be used with the locking device, uh, the guide wire locking technique, and I will try to explain them in this video. So first is assisting penetration due to higher force transmission. So this is um, a model uh, with an occlusion and the guide wire is not able to cross the simulated occlusion that is shown on the left side. So we try to, uh, we advance the micro there, but still uh, the, micro the guide wire cannot cross and it starts backing up. So then we have this locking device which can be um, unlocked and then can be locked again. It can be only be locked with the guide wire inside and at approximately four centimeters away from the stasis valve. And here it shows that you need to, it fixes the guide wire. So in the model, you don't see the guide wire moving. It's in a fixed position inside the micro -predator. And because they are uh, in this hybrid version together, so the guide wire and the micro are together as one hybrid version, they have way more power and they can cross the region. In the second setup, the guide wire has already crossed the lesion and it cannot even move that the occlusion is that tight. So now we are going to try to cross with the micro -catheter. And you can see that it's not able to cross. There's just not enough, yeah, sometimes it happens, there's not enough power. Or the lesion is that tight and that hard that the micro -catheter cannot cross. Again, we can unlock the, the locking device. We lock it again. Remind that the guide wire has to be inside, otherwise you are collapsing the shop. Again, approximately four centimeters away from the stasis valve. You check if the guide wire is really locked. You can see that the device and the guide wire are not moving with respect to each other. And now, by locking the guide wire inside, there is way more forces that can be applied to the device. Uh, and the guide wire is kind of pulling the device through the occluded uh, segment. So this is the um, torquer, uh, sorry, the locking device that can lock the guide wire inside um, the micro catheter, the enhanced approach NX3 series. Um, it was already on the device before the updated version, but with the updated version of the NX3 series, it is way more functional and the effects are way higher. Uh, as we could see from the testing, up to ten times higher if you have a soft wire compared to the competitor devices. So one last feature that I would like to show with you before uh, we continue with the rest of the, the clinical part in the cases is that uh, we can have this unique feature with the, the locking technique by uh, as is with so-called live on NGO tip shaping. So on the left, you see a typical shape of the guide wire. And um, below that, you see an image of the internal configuration of the locking device um, <clears throat> with this uh, locking technique, we can lock the guide wire inside the shaft of the micro catheter. And um, you can imagine that if you have this shape that is shown on the slide, and sometimes you prefer to have a larger band or a smaller band, depending on the, the coronaries or the vessels that you are treating. Um, and on the right side, there are some images where you see that there are different lengths of guide wire coming out of the tip of the micro catheter. So we have done some testing and there were no difference between two to six, uh, between two and six millimeters of the guide wire coming out of the micro of the tip. So there are still, um, the forces are increased a lot. It doesn't matter if they are between two and four millimeters, but depending on the shape, we uh, recommend to have um, a guide wire length outside the enhanced uh, product NX3 series of five millimeters or less. And you can imagine uh, as you see on the images, is that in this way, the guide wire is not moving. So it is having a fixed position and you can really precisely um, determine in this way the shape of your guide wire. And so depending on what you want, you can very nicely uh, and live on NGO see what is the shape of your guide wire and what is most optimal in the situation that you are facing. So uh, maybe we should have some comments on it and on this. Thank you. I would like to give uh, Back to you. Okay, thank you, Suzanne, for your excellent presentation. Uh, we 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 had the opportunity to uh, to see directly uh, how 
you show us uh, with your uh, in vitro testing or with your bench test uh, directly from the cases performed by Alessio and Roberto, especially in terms of uh, high trackability of this uh, microcatheter and also in terms of uh, supportivity. So thank you very much for this uh, uh, presentation. I think that for a question of time, now we have to go on with the last uh, cases presented by uh, Roberto. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you. Yeah, Gabriele. Okay, we can try to take the my presentation. Yeah, we are. We can go on fast with the with the last two point. Uh, just we have we have five minutes. Uh, the most important part of the webinar we, is is done, and also with this great presentation, uh, we have uh, uh, some some situation which uh, we guide extension is really really useful for retrograde pcis can be fantastic uh, and uh, you know how for me is important uh, this is uh, for instance the hostel led cto we, which i was able to cross easily retrograde with the ultimate bros but putting ivus in the left main this is a very important situation the the wire was completely a uh, sub if you do the if you try to do this procedure without IVUS, you can have a, a great disaster. So my suggestion is uh, in Austrial LED CTO, use IVUS and make the connection, the proximal LED. So this was done in the this case uh, with the reverse cars. This is a type one situation, re-entry in the, in the Gideon uh, and uh, you can see the retrograde wire re enter the proximal LED. So in this situation, you can avoid uh, uh, the the losing of a big side branch uh, is in this case the sir in another situation of uh, bifurcation uh, uh, retrograde uh, in this right we have two bifurcation proximal and distal also in this case make the connection distal to the side branch because you can, if you go back this side branch is not filled by retrograde so if you lose this side branch you can have uh, a disaster you can have a right uh, infarct that uh, can be really, really dangerous for the patient. So uh, put the guide extension in the uh, distal to the side branch, make the re-entry in the mid part of the right. This is a Gideon. Distal to the bifurcation, the re-entry, and then here, on the right, uh, the final result get opening also the side branch of the right coronary artery. And uh, uh, the last uh, important point uh, is the use of uh, uh, in ipsilateral retrograde, uh, uh, the use of Gideon 5 French. Uh, you can have, uh, you need to have 8 French guiding catheter. And uh, when you go to have a retrograde ipsilateral, like in this case, and the re-entry in the anti-guide guide, you can have a ping-pong technique or you can use this uh, a single guiding catheter, but you cannot have a trapping balloon uh, in your guiding catheter because if you trap, you trap also your micro catheter. So in this situation, one uh, uh, possible alternative is the Gideon 5 French, uh, not inside the, uh, outside of the, uh, inside of the eight French guiding catheter and uh, the retrograde wire go inside the Gideon, you can see. So the Gideon is outside of the microcatheter, for sure, of the anterior microcatheter, is uh, uh, alongside. The retrograde wire go inside the Gideon, you can trap with 1.5 inside the Gideon, as you can see here, and you can push your uh, uh, retrograde microcatheter. This case was a fine cross. This is a real time pushing of the fine cross inside. Okay, at this time, this point, the micro cutter is inside. And then you can have, uh, you can conclude your procedure with the, with a very good result. So uh, if I have uh, two minutes to use, to show two cases of IVUS utility, when reverse card doesn't work, this is a complex write in which I try to have, uh, uh, we, I use a dual lumen for uh, retrograde access in this uh, Safinus Venus graft. And then I perform a reverse cut in the proximal right. Uh, 
This is a typical situation which we have a failure. We have IVUS in the true loop, in the true, and the uh, retrograde wire subintimal. In this case, one option is try to increase the balloon size, but I fail. The second option is to change the position of your reverse cart that was here in the deep, mid part of the right. IVUS again. And in this case, I will show success of the connection between anti-grade and the retrograde wire. It's a type A situation. And then Gideon re-entry with the Gideon assisted reverse cart uh, quite easily because if you know by IVUS, you are okay, you can have the re-entry and the uh, dilatation and stenting. And the last case, uh, the case of anti-grade puncture of the right, you can see a good puncture, but the ornate was subintimal in the distal right, then I went retrograde, but I, I performed reverse cart, but I was not able to re-enter with the Gazelle distal in, in any way. I start 15, 20 minutes to re-enter, but no way to re-enter. So in this situation, what happened? I performed IVUS and I've seen that this is the worst situation, is type four situation, anti-grade IVUS, uh, subintimal, retrograde wire intimal. So if you dilate the integrate, you increase the subintima space. So you need to change the position in the mid of the right in which you have the connection and you can make the re-entry easily understanding. So I think that Gabriele uh, can have the final uh, point of the conclusion. I just would like to thank uh, IMDS and you, Gabriele and Alessio, for this uh, three uh, spectacular uh, webinar. And uh, uh, I think that really interesting in uh, all field of uh, uh, complex PCI and the CTO. So please, Gabriele, for the yeah, okay. message. Yeah, I would like to, to, to say thank you to my friends, uh, Alessio and Roberto, for sharing this uh, experience and this uh, great opportunity to work together on this uh, uh, webinar series because we are strongly convinced that uh, you never stop to learn. So you can learn from the expert, but you can learn or also uh, sharing experience and uh, discussing or asking questions. So uh, our uh, intention were to, uh, to create, to arrange a series of webinar um, where the uh, mm, the main aspect was to, to share our experience in order to give you some suggestion or some tips and tricks like uh, in this uh, last uh, webinar. But uh, um, I think that one of the most important thing in this uh, subset, I mean complex PCI such as CTO, uh, you can improve your skills and your experience uh, uh, day by day. But you should know uh, which kind of device you are using. This is one of the most important thing. All the devices are not the same. You should know the difference and you should try uh, uh, by yourself uh, how it could work and the best way in different, in different situations, such the case that uh, uh, Roberto and Alessio show with you uh, uh, today. So, uh, thank you very much. Thank you also to uh, IMDS for the support and for promoting this very interesting uh, initiative. I would like to, to give the line to Roberto and Alessio if they want to, to add something. No, thank you, Gabriele. I'd like just to say uh, hello, but goodbye to everybody and to you and uh, hope to see you soon. And I know that uh, in, on Thursday you will have a, a great uh, uh, meeting, uh, CTO Live Aid, uh, with more than 14 hours uh, all over the world, 14 live cases is a great effort, is for a, a great purpose uh, to give, uh, to, to, to have support to the Red Cross for the COVID-19. So you have a really great, fantastic uh, idea and uh, you were able to, 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 to put in practice this, uh, this one. So I wish you uh, the best, uh, good luck for the, for Thursday and uh, I will be with you at the, that time. So thank you very much, Gabriele. Thank you too. Yes. Yeah, for me, it's been a great pleasure to work uh, with all of you. Uh, this webinar has been fantastic. I thank MEDS for organizing that. 
And uh, as uh, Roberto said, uh, let's see everybody on Thursday for the uh, CTO Live A. It is a great uh, CTO event. So thank you, everybody, and see you next. Okay, just a just, uh, uh, thank also to IMDS because it's directly involved in supporting uh, this initiative, CTO Live Aid. So thank you to IMDS for supporting uh, our initiative. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.